now we come to a very exciting part of the agenda, the Brain Forum 2016 Innovation Award Pitches. Now, in this session, we're going to be hearing from six promising startup companies who were selected just yesterday, so they haven't had a huge amount of time to prepare for today. Each startup is going to be sharing with us their ideas and their solutions for the future. The best startup uh, is going to be chosen by you our audience uh, via the forum app, which I'll tell you about in a moment's time. Uh, but if you actually haven't downloaded that app yet, you really must uh, because it's your chance to vote. And also the jury have a say in who's winning as well today. And I'll introduce them in a few moments time. Voting is only going to start at the end of the session after everybody has had a chance to pitch and I will let you know when you can start voting but for the time being if you could just please make sure you have the app that you need. Well, um, let's get on. I'm very pleased to introduce the chair of the panel, Claude Florin, who helped to launch the Brain Forum Innovation Award just last year. Uh, Claude is an active investor in early stage companies supporting more than 40 startups around the EPFL campus as a business angel with A3 Angels. He is also a venture partner at Polytech Ventures. Claude, thank you very much for being here. You're going to take us through later on, aren't you? Um, I'm now going to introduce the jury, who will just say a few words about themselves um, as we say hello. Uh, Monica Di Luca. Yep, my name is Monica Di Luca. Thank you for having me here. It's a great pleasure. I am the president of the Federation of European Neuroscience Societies and the vice president of European Brain Council. And as a background, I am a neuroscientist, so I am absolutely passionate of basic science. So I'm afraid I'm representing science here at the panel, but with the strong conviction that particularly in neuroscience, we are facing a major societal challenge, so we need innovation. Monica, thank you very much. Tej Taddy. All right. Um, I'm Tej. I'm the founder of MindMaze. We're a company that combines virtual reality, augmented reality, a lot of neuroscience to build a wide range of applications. Our first products help a lot of patients with upper extremity motor deficits. And then we have products we're going to launch this year for gamers to help improve their performance. Thank you, Tej. Uh, Marcus Gobel. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Markus Goebel. I'm a physician by training, joined the industry in 1990, have been working as a managing director for the Novartis Venture Fund since 2004. And uh, our small group of 10 um, reports directly to the CFO of Novartis. So we are clearly distinct from our parent organization. We invest early stage, run a high risk, high return model, and want to invest into something that we believe is going to result in a paradigm shift five to seven years down the road. Thank you very much for the invitation here. Thank you very much, Marcus. Uh, Jamila Wassin. Hello, I'm Jamila, working at Medici Ventures, uh, early stage investors based in Europe, London and Geneva. Uh, I'm a neuroscientist by background as well. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Um, we invest in early stage projects as long as we're completely uh, amazed by the science, so we're keen on looking at innovative and, and super great scientific projects. So. Okay, well, I'm sure there's lots of people who are just about to amaze you. <laughs> A very eminent jury we have ahead of us. Claude, um, can you just tell us, I understand that you made the semi-final choices just yesterday out of 18 startups. That must have been really hard. Well, actually, we, we started a few months ago by... Uh, uh, meeting about 40 neuroscience startups uh, in Europe, and yes, 18 of them made it to the semifinals. Uh, um, it was very interesting. I would say, uh, uh, first, we had a, a, a very good jury coming from all background venture capital corporates, but we had also startups from every single field, you know, diagnostic, pathology, up to consumer application, to have a snapshot. Uh, so we are really excited. I think, again, Today, we have a very advanced uh, startups. And I want to say one more thing is uh, I got dragged into that adventure by one feature of my brain uh, doing my early engineering, which is curiosity, unbound curiosity. And I want to also thank uh, 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 Walid and the Brain Forum to have uh, accepted the idea last year and to continue this year. 
it's a fantastic idea. Thank you very much. Best of luck to the jury, but best of luck to all of our uh, people who are just about to pitch. Um, Claude, you're now going to introduce two of the uh, past participants, aren't you, uh, of the Brain Forum Innovation Award, to give us a bit of a sense of their journey since they were involved in this competition. Yes, um, I think we, we have this uh, current year uh, uh, startups, but we started the idea last year, and after looking at all the acti activities around the Human Brain Project on the campus, so I wanted to invite uh, some of the people of the past year that were with us, and a bit my question to them, really the main question I want to know is uh, what happened to, your, to you in the last uh, year or so, or in recent time, and what are the challenges ahead? Because it's great to be on a competition, but it's great to do that conference with everyone, but is it really working? I'm asking myself, you know, are we doing the right things or not? So uh, I want to invite uh, um, uh, Vincent Delattre from uh, uh, G Therapeutics, from the spin-off of uh, Professor Courtin Lab, and I also want to invite uh, Jean-Marc Vismer from KB Medical. They're both in spinal and uh, moving up to the brain. Okay, so what happened to you uh, in, in recent months and what are the challenges ahead? Thank you for coming. So, I'm Vincent Delattre, I'm a co-founder of GTRPTICS. It's a company developing a therapy for improving recovery after spinal cord injury. Uh, as Claude said, it's a spin-off from PFL where scientists have demonstrated for the first time in fully paralyzed animals uh, that they can recover the capacity to walk. And the approach is based on the combination of electrical stimulation of the spinal cord with robotic training. And the combination of these two factors promotes remodeling of neural circuits both at, the, both at the spinal level and the cerebral level, and, and restore voluntary control of locomotion. And at GTR Politics, um, we want to take the step to humans. So we are translating this one breaking breakthrough into a therapeutic intervention for, for human patients. Remark, I've seen you have brought a huge robot on the booth. You want to tell us what it is about? Thank you, Vincent. Uh, KB Medical has developed the accurate robotic assistant for spinal surgery for applications such as lead placements or tumor removal, mini invasive spinal surgery, and many more applications. Indeed, the robotic assistant has the accuracy for brain surgery, the reach for spinal surgery, and the strength for orthopedic surgery. The robot has a unique, intuitive, haptic steering, intraoperative capability, and integrates into existing surgical flows. You're very welcome to pass by our booth and to try the robots. Actually, you're very welcome to visit the exhibition area, and more particularly, the startup area. I think this is, this is a very nice congress, this brain forum. What, what do you think of this forum, Vincent? Well, clearly, um, one of the questions that has been asked to us is why do startups go to events like the Brain Forum? And I think it's very important for all of us to inspire and be inspired. Uh, as neuroscientists, we work hard in the lab to develop uh, our technologies or to push the science forward. And as entrepreneurs, um, we change cap and um, we try to push our ID forwards also to the industry, to the clinics, and develop a product, uh, fundraise. And I think we should keep the link. And uh, science is what makes innovations, and entrepreneurs are those who put innovation in the hands of patients. So uh, we, we have to stick along together. And the Brain Forum is one of the uh, important events where it is done for neuroscience. So thank you very much uh, for the initiative. Uh, thank you very much. I agree very much. I think this forum for startup companies is an important component of the innovation ecosystem we have in the, in the area. Look at the fantastic presentations you have before. It really gives visibility to, to startup companies. Uh, it's not an easy exercise for them also to craft a message to be hitting the nail on the head to adapt this message in a short few minutes. Uh, keeping to the essential, even if you're, especially if you're actually pretty much science driven. So I think this is a great exercise. They can meet investors, they can hear the input of strategic partners. Um, I think this is, um, this is a very important event for startup companies. Now, Vincent, why are you here today? Well, 
I was a finalist uh, last year, so they asked me, uh, what's up? Uh, what have you been up to in the past 12 months? Um, so last year, we were a spin-off from EPFL. Um, we're still based in Lausanne, have a strong interaction with uh, EPFL, uh, with Lausanne University Hospital. But we have opened a, a center in the Netherlands on the high-tech campus where we're developing our uh, medical implant for the spinal cord. Um, we have secured a very large uh, financing round to develop our implant and basically finance the company activities for the next five years, um, both in equity capital and uh, private uh, and public funding. And I think uh, it's, it's um, the grand strength to be able to, to find uh, the combination of public funding together with private funding in order to be able to put together a high-risk project such as ours. The first time I pitched my project in front of an audience, people asked me, Vincent, uh, you're trying to make paralyzed people walk again. Are you a fool or are you Jesus? Um, well, not, I hope none of the above. Uh, we just try to do something good. And um, it's highly risky, of course, and it's good to find the support of people who have the means to do it. And um, yeah, joining forces between public and, and private uh, funding sources where it's a, a mean to go. And last, we are, we are still very active in Switzerland. We recently started a collaboration with Suva Rehabilitation Hospital, which is the main rehabilitation hospital for Western Switzerland. Uh, we have hired like 15 people and uh, starting the development of our product, so we are on Wales now. I hope I'll see you next year, give you more updates. A fool or Jesus, Vincent, you're not Jesus. <laughs> Um, the reason we are here is um, the company is ISO certified, um, the product is fully industrialized, we're expecting the CE mark any day now, very strong IP. The reason we're here is we're looking for financing, we're looking for a series B, I should call it actually a bridge to exits because at the same time we have initiated a partnership uh, merger and acquisition process that we expect is going to end up in about a year from, from now. Okay, I, th I think we, we just want to applaud you as a good example, perhaps move to the panel session. Thank you very much Thank indeed, you. gentlemen. It certainly sounds like the networking and visibility given by the Brain Forum really does help start up. So thank you very much for highlighting that. Uh, we are now going to have a panel discussion for the next 30 minutes or so, led by Claude, um, which may or may not help you decide who to vote for uh, when you can. Um, can I just start by asking a quick question? You asked some fairly tough questions <laughs> of our pitchers there. I wouldn't have wanted to have been standing here. What were you impressed with and what were you not impressed with? So I just start by a, a general comments. I think most of the startups do try to start with a, a clear clinical objective. Some of them are trying to just make us more healthy, actually, with the end. But I think there's an objective to solve a solution. And I think the second uh, comments I would make is it, it is trying to leverage a wide range of technology and science that's been developed. So for me. It's the kind of thing we want to promote uh, in the conference, but I'll let the rest of the panel judge. I'll, I'll answer the, um, the question indirectly. You know, when I see young companies um, pitching with us, um, I suggest the CEO to sit down with a blank sheet of paper, lock him or herself up in a room, and answer the following five questions. <laughs> the first question is, what do I have? and what do I not have? Technology, science, IP, understanding of biology, target, and mode of action. Second question, what is the goal? What is success? And what is not the goal and what is not success? Third question, what does it take? And can I do it? Which speaks to resources, people, investors, board members, time, money. The next question is, at the end of the day, will anybody care? And that is a view which is very much, uh, very much um, linked to commercial considerations. So is anybody going to buy my product or say, oh, it's a nice to have, but not really. Oh, that's exciting. I need to have that. And the last question is, how do I tackle risk and challenges? And if then the CEO comes back and has answered these questions, 
and I'm satisfied, that's a good start. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Can I add a Same point? Same question, yes, please. Yeah, I was very impressed with what you were saying with your five questions, and one particularly is extremely good to me, that is, what do I have? Because I, I like very much the discussion today and all the push that we have towards innovation, but as a scientist, I have to remind everybody that particularly in neuroscience, we really do not know the whole picture, and we still definitely need intense fundamental research to give us the knowledge behind our innovation. So I think that this question particularly is extremely important. Before going into the business, before going into the market, is there enough knowledge on what I really would like to have as a target? Is there enough basic research that give us the correct background to proceed and to move on. So I thank you for this, because I think it's absolutely needed. OK. Claude, I'm going to leave you to chair the rest of this session, and, um, and then we'll open the voting. So thank you maybe very much. I'd like to continue a little bit on, on, on that topic, or say we got some rules. W what else could we do with these startups, uh, you guys think? You know, what should we encourage? How do, we, do we do ourselves, and the audience as well, by the way, enough to help them? And what would be the criteria of success? You know? I don't know if you've got some suggestion and insights. Um, maybe I can start with an idea. Um, what, what we think is really important, of course, is to, as you were saying, at some point sit down and really get to know exactly what you have in hands and the, know, the knowledge and the know-how you have behind that. And if you find that, that you're missing, there's, there are some gaps in, in the scheme you have in front of you, it's super important to, to go and get the knowledge and the know-how you need and get in touch with the right people with the right expertise. Um, because in the end, you have um, then, of course, you have a better view of what's going on outside, what's happening on the market, for example. Um, but also, it's uh, it's a way of minimizing the risk because uh, there's always risk to be taken, but in the end, you want to minimize it yeah. with uh, what you can bring as knowledge right away from the beginning. How did you get started? <laughs> what would you say? I'm the startup guy on the panel, I think. So. Now, I, I think it's fantastic that you know, it takes both perseverance and I think we're all fools being entrepreneurs because these guys pitch all the time. They have to do it a hundred times. They have to be passionate about the idea. They have to convince an audience, still be true to their vision, make you know, diversions. So it takes a lot of perseverance. It's already great they're on the panel and they're trying to express their idea on the podium. So congratulations. I think it's, it's great that you're here. Uh, but I mean, Practical points. I think the one thing that didn't work is I think there's a disconnect between how you want to address the market versus the amount of funding and resources you want. It's typically an ecosystem thing where consumer businesses might need a lot more money versus uh, how you want to, you know, tranche your funding for a healthcare business. Uh, there's those large investors right here. Uh, but from my mistakes, I can only tell you about mistakes. The one thing I was told very early is uh, hire slowly, fire quickly. Um, it's, I think, an important thing to have. Um, it's also important, I guess, and I, I agree to what Marcus has just said, uh, having done it in your head a hundred times, I think we will learn what the best way to address the message to an audience is, but I guess you have to stay true to your heart, right? Exactly why I'm going to do this, if I'm going to risk my family and my life for this and for the world to change the world. So. There's a few practical things to address, but I, I mean, it's a discussion. We can continue this, but I think there's a massive funding gap to be discussed <laughs> between early stage and late stage ventures. So, yeah. I'll leave it to you. Uh, I guess you I'd like to there. enter a little bit of debate um, a bit differently, and I rebounding on your question what do we have and what we have not. Um, I'm actually. Uh, driven by curiosity, which means I'm even more driven by what we do not have than what we have. And uh, uh, for example, I didn't plan to mention that, but you know, I've, I've worked in medical aging for many, many years, and now I'm really, really interested, and it started with multimodality, but now I'm interested in high resolution but PET, because the combination of MR and high resolution PET will give me dynamic functional imaging, like we had in cardiac Im imaging with ultrasound. So that's not ready. 
but we're doing, we, we did a European research project. We did a photo detector of Professor Charbon, and we're down to the millimeter resolution of PET scanners. That's not going to be for, for a startup this year or next competition, but maybe in five years. So I will say, I'll, I shut that parenthesis to say, maybe it's about starting, even at the research stage, to identify and scan nice technology, and but later to do seed stage funding, and then a bit later to address large corporate funding. But this applies to technologies. This applies to the technology and to the curiosity that is developing new technology based on technologies advancement in other sectors, and this is fantastic. But is your innovation also driven by major questions like societal need? That was a bit going to be your <laughs> next phase of, of the panel. <laughs> Nobody comment, maybe. I thought we would expand that a bit later, but um, I don't want to answer it. I would rather rebound to the whole panel than in the context of the forum. Uh, we are trying to address these huge neuroscience challenge disease of the 21th century as we branded it, okay? Uh, uh, the biggest one, so is it, how do we select for startups those targets that are doable and that, those which are not yet ripe for doing a startup? So we would lose money and not even achieve our group. We would lose time probably, yeah. and which would remain in science and in the lab. I don't know, if, do you have an opinion? You're the scientist. Oh, no. <laughs> Not really an opinion, but I think that these challenges has to, take, has to be taken into consideration sooner or later. So I would like to see a, a real merge between the two words of the curiosity driven and on the fact that you are really exploiting your brain and your research in certain domain with the fact that you need to merge with reality and what are the needs. And so I think that the two words should merge at a certain time. This is a good opportunity, for example. I think if, if someone's looking to make a startup, if you're in neuroscience, healthcare, future trends, macro trends, if you're looking into drug device combinations, drug software combinations, it does not matter if it's a consumer proposition, if you're an add-on device, that's where the trends are. I think more and more if you want to look in the future, data, uh, machine learning, how that's going to creep into uh, our lives in healthcare beyond Facebook and messaging, is going to be important. So there's some nice trends out there. So if you're looking to make a startup, uh, there's quite a few opportunities in the way you can combine different modalities. If you want to be a hardware business, you've got to be careful. It's a lot of money. I think software, apps, um, scalable quickly. And yeah, make all your mistakes quickly, I guess. But future trends, I think drug device, drug software, a lot of data, database startups, exciting. Um, yeah, so maybe one last, last point on my side is that, uh, of course, now I'm on the side of the investors, although I had been a scientist before, and, and, uh, and we really encourage appetite for risk. Uh, this is, this is our, daily, our daily concept now. Um, what I think is that uh, for us, of course, you never know whether this molecule will work and show good data in phase two proof of concept. You never know. You never know what can happen. There's always so drug development is, is very highly unpredictable. But what, what we feel as investors and what really matters for us, if, especially at early stage, is that we feel that the people we're talking to uh, have a path in mind and, uh, and that they know where, what they're dealing with, or at least they will try to, um, to fill the gaps of what they don't know. And, and for us, this is also what matters. The pitch we get and the feeling we have about how much leadership there is in front of us. Um, we're aware that uh, we're taking a risk, mm -hmm. but now we, we feel like we trust the person we have in front of us. This is, uh, I would say this is a big step, yeah. Want to add a comment on that? Uh, maybe I, I have a, a part I'm interested in, uh, maybe again in the context of the conference. The conference is a, Pan-European conference, uh, a little bit on the side of the European uh, flagship research on the brain project. And 
I think it's extremely valuable uh, to also think of, uh, to solve this question of entrepreneurship, to do, you know, immediately international cooperation. I mean, I love the fact that, you know, we see g getting to Eindhoven, and then we see some of the path uh, happening. But uh, is that a theme that we think it's dispersion, or on the other hand, it will lead to more you know, fact tracking and, and finding the bad, the, the no answer earlier and finding your, your path. Is, is that your international d dimension uh, overhead or absolutely required? Uh, wants to uh, <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, nervous, nervous system is, is certainly one of the most difficult therapeutic areas that you can talk about. I think it's even more challenging than oncology, for example. Yeah. Um, and I want to give also credit, I mean, to the many people um, like the ones having presented today that there to go in there and try to develop something. We should praise these entrepreneurs who take this risk, which is not only a technical risk from a product or a company point of view, but also is a personal risk because you dedicate five to 10 years of your lifetime to something that eventually may fail in a very high um, proportion. Um, on the other hand, you know, you want to make sure that you set the direction right and that you can be successful at the end of the day. And me as a physician, I, of course, I see many opportunities that I would love to come to the market as a product. But I know from an investment point of view, it doesn't make sense. The return of investment is not fulfilling mm -hmm. the criteria of my limited partners of Novartis in, 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 in my particular case. You know, I'm responsible to my CFO and to um, our organization um, because we are not mainstream. On the other hand, we want to make sure that we help the community as best as we can to set the right direction, even though we may not invest in this opportunity, but at least we want to give it the best shot we can so that overall the industry is more successful. Okay. Um, maybe since the question was also asked, uh, I, I never liked so much to talk about it, but the funding, you know, you, you touch upon the, um, is there a funding gap or is there more than a funding gap? And you know, tonight we'll also give an award which includes the Mass Challenge. So it's a, an organization that mostly focuses on mentoring internationally uh, some of the startups. So what should we do uh, uh, in terms of funding and beyond funding? Uh, no, I think so. Two, two points. I think if a startup goes local, you're dead in water. You have to go international from day one. You can't think of local funding and just local partners. But funding gap, I think we're a bit lucky in Europe because it's two things. You get early stage funding, you get European grants, you get some foundations to support you if it's a healthcare initiative. Not so lucky if you're making an app. But what it does is gets you attached to the idea and you keep working on it thinking you might get some more. It's like drip feeding yourself, right? Without really commercializing the product. So if it's a healthcare product, the biggest gap I've seen is you get the first million, you get the four million, you build prototypes, you're excited by patients, then what? You know, when does a reimbursement company pay for this? If you make 500 patients, what do I need 50 million? Will I get 50 million? They're gonna say you have to commercialize first. So it's a chicken and egg situation, right? So the funding gap, I guess, beyond organic funding and going international, there's a lack of investors, early stage VCs, have to probably look at pre-revenue, pre-regulatory, pre-clinical investments. And I think Marcus will have something to say there. Because the late stage investments, I guess, are relatively easy to use because the ROI is essentially there to take. It's also very diverse locally. So there is also okay. a jeopardized situation in, in different states. So this is also counts a lot you now. So the combination between the international funding and the local funding and the local environment, I think, is also met. So, yeah. I could comment that I spent the last six years of my life, I never intended to. Uh, it's a by byproduct, probably a gain of curiosity, but with a couple of classmates, uh, we helped put uh, initially six million and definitely pre-seed. Yeah. We invested in a company prior to their foundation here on the campus. Then some of the others got more involved in setting up Polytech, which now has 
been raising something like 35 million, again, a bit of slight, but we, you'd call it regional, seed stage, uh, um, not totally for money, okay, there's a lot of foundation support there. And uh, um, I, I felt that was, what was most important was not the money, was the, the fact that all that was leveraged with people who are probably in the room, you know? We had investors in the 10,000 and whatever joining, and what I used to tell the entrepreneur, you know, what's most important, forget the pitch, for, forget the business plan and forget your very good remarks, but try to get some friends. Um, I would prefer friends, friends who are knowledgeable, who had an experience, who lived their life in a hospital, who know what happens in the field, but primarily they are they're friends because they are not going to mentor your project, they're going to mentor you personally and help you go use the best use of your time. So that's a message to the audience. I devoted a bit of the time to that and I find it very good that then you have people like Jamila, you know, in, in our fund. I'll say one more thing because they're, they're, I, I read what is on their, uh, on their website. They encourage teams that combine scientists that, can, that could become industry leaders, that are smart, insightful, driven by clear product vision, and very comfortable in uncharted territory. I love these words, you know. But they want to address clinical need, and, and they, of course, then turn to clin and technology and products and whatever. But I think it's a certain spirit. So for me, these words are probably more important than the amounts of money. That's my impression. <laughs> if we go along these lines, the money is a consequence of going with that attitude. That's what I found in, in my personal life. But anyway, I talk too much with passion. Um, maybe pass the qu uh, last question to the panel. We, we are in the Brain Forum, and the Brain Forum has this kind of particular aspect that it, it has a strong part in computer science uh, used for modeling the Human and Brain Project. But on the other hand, we have all the other uh, neuroscience technology and, and solution. Who thinks it's a good opportunity to merge the kind of two knowledge? Is it like essential because uh, uh, places like that where people meet create sparks? Combine two simple ideas is better than having one brilliant idea. Yeah. Can I comment? On What's that? your? Yeah. Well, I think that neuroscience, par excellence, is a multidisciplinary or cross-disciplinary field. So if we keep all the fields separately, this is not going to happen. And um, we, as I said, we still need to increase our knowledge as first, and we still need to face enormous societal challenges. This morning has been discussed about Alzheimer's disease. Uh, tomorrow we will talk about mental health. These things are big, big challenges. We are talking in Europe about 800 billion euros per year of cost on this disease. So this means simply that we are not there yet. And if we stay in our silos, this is not going to happen because we do not merge our competencies. So I think that a forum like this is extremely important because merge ICT, merge investors, merge people, and merge science. But what I would like to see in the future is also more of this component coming, for example, to large basic science fora that are of course, run, run in Europe. So I like to see, we were discussing a little bit before, investors coming to the basic science meeting because I think that this is a feeding process and it is an intercultural feeding process. So we are maybe not fully aware of our potential. So helping each other maybe can reach the goal that to me is still facing this societal need with intensive basic research, increasing the knowledge and curbing the numbers that I just told you. And yeah, this is completely in line to actually what we experience on a daily basis because looking at the portfolio of companies we currently, we currently have now, um, we found out that almost 80% of the startups we created directly come from academic laboratories. It's like we see an IP, we see a great scientific idea, we have the scientific expertise behind that. Okay, it looks good, let's create a company. This is literally how we do it uh, most of the time. And of course we fund biotech, existing biotechs or also, but, but, but it's really, I mean, what, what, what we love is actually being so close to this pure yeah. academic world because this is, where, this is where great science is. That's it, I mean. Okay, that's certainly going to delight some of the faculty in this, uh, or from this our institution and many others who are visiting. 
Uh, uh, so I think uh, it's a good. I also believe that that's a foundation, you know. Sure. Yeah. And I'm, I'm tomorrow uh, at the advisory board of the risk finance of the European Commission. So officially, we try to u make best use of 140 billion euro uh, for the coming years. And and I I always uh, say it's science and it's perhaps excellent science. Absolutely. So no compromise. <laughs> uh, certainly, we're not about social. Um, uh, Jan, we were trying to find the best. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. that's I agree. Yeah. Excellence is yeah. the word. So maybe more science and just more experimentation. So maybe we're not doing anything wrong. Um, no, but yeah. Perhaps good to acknowledge again the role of um, a private individuals. And last year, last year there was a philanthropic session uh, with uh, Hugo Wies and uh, some of our uh, visitors in the front row. So the people who fund that conference, by the way, and this is coming from private means. So perhaps we could acknowledge that uh, also oh, in, think, yeah. in that thing. Maybe not only the funding, but the encouragement in general. Yeah. No, I, and any question in the audience, I'm just thinking, because we're, we're debating there and maybe there's somebody who's got a boi boiling question. Is there anybody who um, was inspired, I'm sure you were, by the pitches that we had and wants to get involved in this conversation? Well, you're already falling asleep and you don't need that, that startup <laughs> I might advice. need just have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Is there anybody who'd like to ask a question? I'll give you a moment, because I've got a question that I would quite like to ask, which was whether or not the panel feel that the, that the pitches today address the right clinical needs that we have. Were they aimed in the right direction? Uh, my question is, do they have to? <laughs> a, a very good answer. Oh. So maybe I'm not. It's up to the panel. I, I'm uh, partly, yes, I have to say that I was impressed by reading also the material and talking to them. Uh, partly, they have a clear mind on the clinical validation and the unmet need, and partly they are technology-driven, so I think it was a good combination. But uh, in the future, maybe, uh, we need also to tackle more directly the societal challenge we are facing. And, you know, some fields are not that popular because we had fields in which, as he said, the return of investment is, uh, is a tremendous risk and it's maybe too low. And although you have the knowledge, maybe people are not engaging that much. So maybe in the future we can reach and fill that gap as well. Uh, so I'm looking at my cards here. And the fact that I know the other startups, and I'd say, first, well, we had a few startups that are maybe addressing too many clinical needs and spanning too wide. Some that were trying to shoot two bullets with one solution. One solution. Okay. And, and for those who are not on stage, I have to say that on the booth, we didn't pick them perhaps to come on the booth, but they are addressing real needs. Uh, with maybe not a unique solution, but um, I'm thinking of all the many addressing rehabilitation, and we have a shortage of 600,000 nurses in Europe for rehabilitation. And sure, some of the, de the demonstration of the panel, they address a perfect, it's maybe not the only one in, the, in Europe who do it, but they do a very useful uh, uh, approach. So I also want to acknowledge these, these startups, is, uh, they are all interesting in their own right. So, yeah. Touch. I, I, I think what interests me the mo most is the approach, the multidisciplinarity of them bringing software, devices, the biotech piece. That's the exciting part. If you want to take these big moonshots at great ideas, you have to mix these different technologies. I mean, technology has come a long way. So. Exciting, I think they are, of course, addressing clinical need. Will it translate to market is not up to them, it's not up to anyone else. I guess that's just, a, it's even chance sometimes. Mm. So A lot of it is luck yeah. as but well, But it's the approach it? that is exciting. I think they've, they've done that. We'll have the hypothermia in every accident emergency hospital and room in, in Europe is debatable, but the clinical approach is good and validated yeah. and well known, okay. Anybody in the audience? This gentleman here. Could you remind us who you are, please, sir? Yes. Uh, Brian Rudkin, Stem Cell and Brain Research Institute in CERM in Lyon. Also, I've catalyzed innovation in the Rhône-Alpes region for the past quarter century from the science side. Uh, and I'd like to, I was very impressed by the, uh, the projects that were presented and their diversity, as has just been said several times. How many projects do you as investors get to see in a year, or maybe a month is easier, <laughs> and how many do you actually consider, 
And how many do you actually see? And how many do you actually fund? <laughs> okay, it's a numbers game. Thank you. I'll go ahead. Okay. Hang on, can we just wait for the microphone to go back up again? Thank you very much. Yes, sorry. The reason I'm asking is, I think it's good to put into perspective that this is one of your ways of selecting those who are determined, who have the, the desire to uh, take on risk and to move forward, because what you're doing is the sifting through the masses and to go back and see the 20 different uh, venture capitalists who invest in their funds, to write the grant requests, to get the funding from the local sources, to go see their grandmothers, uncles, and aunts, to get the money to help them to stay alive. That requires determination. And I think it's good to hear what the percentage uh, success is in, with you. Thank you. So, so we, we have a team of 10 people, um, both in Basel and in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We see probably around 500 to 1,000 opportunities a year. Um, we do roughly, I would guess, between 30 and 50 deep dives in due diligence, and we fund six to eight new investments per year. And who's going to tell us at the time of the investment whether we have taken the right decision? We just do not know. <laughs> Despite all the due diligence that we do, there's still a huge risk involved here. And at the end of the day, it's a judgment call. You learn with experience, you know, you accumulate knowledge, but you need to constantly learn and you need to try to be humble every day because you can always be wrong. So it's a tricky field, but it's very exciting because you see all that innovation. And again, back to what I said before, um, credits to the entrepreneurs who try and dare to start a company. <laughs> Do you know what? That's such a nice answer. I think we will leave this part of the discussion now. So thank you very much. Thank you for asking that question. Um